to the home of the Black Titanic. After Obama ordered the assassination of the leader of Gaddafi, many Africans were forced into slavery. So to escape, they took to the Mediterranean Sea where many died. This bears similarity to the Blacks who was on board the Titanic, but there was no lifeline, so many perished and was buried under the sea. Again, welcome to the home of Black Titanic. So let's look at the update in court. Nene Leakes. Bravo lawsuit might just be resolved sooner rather than later. This is by Lauren Benderbend, Benderbend uh, published 25 days ago. So the Real Housewives alum is involved in multiple lawsuits. There go Nene. No thanks. So let's just go, just see what it's saying. Lawsuit over the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She sees major development. The reality star claims that several incidents with her former castmate Kim Zokat Berman, where she allegedly used racial stereotypes and slurs were swept under the rug by Bravo leadership. <clears throat> in addition, she indicated to TMZ in May that she faced racially insensitive behavior from even the white head of the corporation. Her complaints supposedly incited a backlash that had her blacklisted job from the industry at large. However, Nene Leakes maintained to the outlet that her main goal with the suit isn't free publicity or a money grab, as some have suggested. She only wants to stop discrimination against black women. So the latest development in the legal drama is that talks are in motion to settle the matter. According to court documents obtained by Page Six, Andy Cohen, Bravo and its parent company, NBC Universal stipulated there are contractual agreements in place with Nene Leakes to do arbitration in New York or independent remediation. In other words, first, Leakes apparently disputed arbitration outright, yet they are all seemingly of the same mind that the current efforts towards negotiating this issue on their own will to avoid the time and expense of a motion to compel arbitration. As a, re as a result, a judge in Atlanta where the suit was filed granted a 40-day extension for them to finish said discussion. If it all goes well, there could be a resolution before things escalate further. Certainly, the corporate side of things would likely prefer that. Yet, if Nene Lee's primary goal is preventing the Real Housewife Atlanta from continuing to be a discriminatory work environment, like she alleged is, then 45 days may not be enough to negotiate a... So this is why they say this is a double standard. 
uh, these ladies, these white ladies, her colleagues were never called violent. They were never a black ball from uh, industry. So let's just read this. We'll see Nene White colleagues on Real Housewife of, of Atlanta or otherwise destroy property, perpetuate racist tendency, and everything under the sun with little to no reprieve. Yes, when Nene alleges uh, racism, her cries for help fell on deaf ear. Never mind that at one point, Nene and her larger-than-life personality became synonymous with the brand. It's a tale. It's a tale as old as time when the talent of black woman is used as a tool to enhance the workplace. But they are laid out to dry when the company has no use for them anymore. Thankfully, Nene influences lives beyond that network. So Nene is claiming discrimination. There's a double standard in the pay. Even though Nene been there the longest and was on the number one uh, housewife show, she was not getting the same pay as others. So there certainly is a double standard. Nene, I hope you lose your I hope you win your discrimination suit, Nene. Tolerated and encouraged a racist and hostile work environment. You think you can talk to people like that? Slave, your slave is behind you. Here's my slave. Slave! You accused Kim Zolci at Berman of using the N-word, which then in turn made you suffer PTSD, anxiety. Have you heard from Andy? Have you heard from Kim, Nene? Um, I haven't heard from anybody, but I have a really good... Uh, support system around me, so I am doing really well. Well, you have found a great support system, but also mm -hmm. a gentleman by the name of Yanni, correct? <laughs> and he's here with you today. Are you happy right now? Are you in um, love? I'm in a good place. This is all new to him. He's not in the industry. Nini began dating a fashion designer, Yanni Sila Sia, in December. Drama soon followed. Earlier this month, his ex-wife filed a lawsuit against Nini, alleging she broke up their marriage. How are you feeling about the lawsuit that was filed against you? Um, I don't feel anything. <laughs> I mean, you were very vocal in an Instagram post. I'm, I'm already out here, a uh, husband still, and this is too much. So I feel like it's their business and not mine, right? And I feel like I was dragged into something I shouldn't have been brought into it. I really think that it's something that Yanni has to handle himself. Am yeah. I the first one here? <laughs> Right now, Nini is focused on her reality TV return. Starting Sunday, she'll go back to school in BET's College Hill Celebrity Edition. I was excited about jumping back into reality TV because I had been out for a little while. Yes. So I was a little afraid about who might be in the house with me. Nini's college roommates include Ray J, Lamar Odom, and Clueless star Stacey Dash. Now, yes. Stacey Dash, she's not really vibing with the rest of the roommates. Come on, Stacey. It's going to be real interesting. <laughs> I was really working hard to have a relationship with Stacey. You were. So I was just <laughs> like, let me just be really nice over yeah. here. Are you willing to jump back into reality TV? You know, I've been through a lot. Reality is where I started. Um, it built my career. Years, you know, you can't come back and say, oh, they treated me unfairly because you didn't get something else that you wanted, you know? Or something that, that you, you didn't like however your contract that particular year. You can't go back and just negate everything else that, you know, that you they've done in your situation. So that's why I just, I cannot agree with that. I mean, I know, I mean, I know a lot of the women, especially at that time, you know, now we got a lot of new people. It's not as many of us still left on the show. But at that time, you know, we still had like, you know, four or five of us who had been there for a while. We was making some really good money. So, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, how how does that work? You know what I mean? It's not like one person is doing well on the show. It's like multiple women on the show are doing really well. Um, so to come back and be like, oh, yeah, they treat us unfairly. I mean, yeah, there's certain things that you may not like, um, certain things that you may want to, you know, try to do better. But overall, to say that they were racist, I didn't, I, I didn't agree with that at all.
All right, Candace. That's what's wrong with our people. You know what? We only look out for ourselves. That girl have a great discrimination case. And you gonna look like a fool when she win, Candace. Anyway, this is Sorry FM, the Clay Kane Show with um, Candy Burrs disagreeing that Bravo is racist. <laughs> Right now, Nene is focused on her reality TV return. Starting Sunday, she'll go back to school in BET's College Hill Celebrity Edition. I was excited about jumping back into reality TV because I had been out for a little while. Yeah. So I was a little afraid about who might be in the house with me. Nene's college roommates include Ray J, Lamar Odom, and Clueless star Stacey Dash. Now, yeah. Stacey Dash, she's not really vibing with the rest of the roommates. Come on, Stacey. It's gonna be real interesting. <laughs> I was really working hard to have a relationship with Stacey. You were. So I was just like, right, <laughs> let me just be really nice over yeah. here. Are you willing to jump back into reality TV? You know, I've been through a lot. Reality is where I started. Um, it built my career. So I'm very open to other experiences. Oh, Nini, thanks for stopping by. Always great hanging out with you. <laughs> So Nene has a lawsuit going on with Bravo, y'all. Because his family experienced poverty, Woods only attended school until the age of 10. He then began working to help his family survive. He worked in a machine shop where he learned mechanics. Information also suggests that he worked as a railroad engineer, engineer on a British ship, railroad worker, and blacksmith. Woods became interested in electrical engineering and began learning as much as he could about electricity and its concepts. From 1876 to 1878, he enrolled into a technical team. He then began working to help his family survive. He worked in a machine shop where he learned mechanics. Information also suggests that he worked as a railroad engineer, engineer on a British ship, railroad worker, and blacksmith. Woods became interested in electrical engineering and began learning as much as he could about electricity and its concepts. From 1876 to 1878, he enrolled into a technical college and studied electrical and mechanical engineering. Upon graduation, he began working on a steamship called the Ironsides. After working on the Ironsides for two years, Woods was promoted to the chief engineer of the Ironsides. Upon returning to his home state of Ohio, he began working at the pumping stations for the Springfield, Jackson, and Pomeroy Railroad Company. His next step was becoming an engineer with the Dayton and Southwestern Railroad Company. Woods was a very brilliant and capable engineer, but he was still a black man working in the white man's world. He was continuously being denied opportunities and losing out on promotions. Channeling his frustration, Woods and his brother Lyates created the Woods Electric Company. During the time Woods was traveling as an engineer, he developed the ideas for one of his most popular inventions, the multiplex telegraph. He gained his first patents in 1984 for the steam boiler furnace and the telephone transmitter. His next patent was for an apparatus that combined the telephone and the telegraph called the telegraphony. The invention allowed someone from a telegraph station to send messages through a single wire. Railroad worker and blacksmith. Woods became interested in electrical engineering and began learning as much as he could about electricity and its concepts. From 1876 to 1878, he enrolled into a technical college and studied electrical and mechanical engineering. Upon graduation, he began working on a steamship called the Ironsides. After working on the Ironsides for two years... This, is, uh, this young man is standing on the shoulder of giants. That's the name of it. Woods was promoted to the chief engineer of the Ironsides. Upon returning to his home state of Ohio, he began working at the pumping stations for the Springfield, Jackson, and Pomeroy Railroad Company. His next step was becoming an engineer with the Dayton and Southwestern Railroad Company. Woods was a very brilliant and capable engineer, but he was still a black man working in the white man's world. He was continuously being denied opportunities and losing out on promotions. Channeling his frustration, Woods and his brother Lyades created the Woods Electric Company. During the time Woods was traveling as an engineer, he developed the ideas for one of his most popular inventions, the multiplex telegraph. 
He gained his first patents in 1984 for the steam boiler furnace and the telephone transmitter. His next patent... Y'all hear that? He invented the first wireless communication that leads to the cell phones today, y'all. ...was for an apparatus that combined the telephone and the telegraph called the telegraphony. The invention allowed someone from a telegraph station to send messages through a single wire. The invention became very popular and Woods would sell the rights of the device to the American Bell Telephone Company. In 1887, he gained another patent for a device that allowed the train stations and the engineers on the train to communicate while the trains were moving. The device was called the Synchronous Multiplex Railway Telegraph. White supremacy began to rear its ugly to steal Woods' patent for the Synchronous Multiplex Railway Telegraph. Edison filed the lawsuit but was not successful. After the legal matters, Edison offered Woods a position in the Edison Electric Light Company. Woods declined the offer and remained the owner of his own company and inventions. In 1892, he created an electrical system that supplied electricity to trains every 12 feet without having wires or batteries exposed. It allowed the trains to travel without fear of electrical malfunctions. Woods was responsible for inventing the power pickup device in 1901, and he gained patents for the improved air brake systems from 1902 to 1905. He was responsible for creating over 15 appliances for railways and held close to 60 patents for his inventions. On January 30th, 1910, Woods died in New York City as one of, if not the greatest inventor in American history. Mr. Granville T. Woods, we yes. proudly stand on your shoulders. Yes, we are. This is, this young man did an excellent job. Glenville Wood, y'all. Also, I like to just say the uh, Titanic was using his invention, too, because uh, Glenville Wood, this is on the shoulder of giants. And I learned about him when I was uh, doing my research on the Titanic. They were using his invention on the Titanic as well.